stacked on top of each other. What are they? And what are they used for? It's a soroban, the traditional wooden abacus that has been used in Japan for centuries, right up to the present day. After the abacus was introduced to Japan from China some 500 years ago, its form was developed and refined. Known in Japanese as soroban, or calculation board, it soon became an essential tool of the trade for merchants throughout the country. Skilled soroban users can manipulate the beads so fast that they can calculate numbers into the thousands in a single second without any error. The Japanese abacus is the ultimate analog calculation tool, and often it's faster to use than a digital calculator. These days, growing concern about declining numeracy skills among Japanese children has spurred renewed interest in teaching soroban skills. Today on the In Japanology, we'll explore this fascinating instrument that has helped to inculcate generations of Japanese people with mathematical ability. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. This week we're going to be looking at the soroban, which is the Japanese traditional abacus, and we'll look at the contribution that it's made to an understanding of mathematics in this country. First of all, what does a soroban do? Well, in addition to being an excellent percussion instrument, it also does an admirable job of performing the four basic mathematical calculations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. The abacus has a long history in many countries around the world. The Japanese version, the soroban, has been refined to suit it even better for rapid calculation. It's still quite widely used in this country, and most primary school children come into at least some basic contact with it. Also, if you go into an old, traditional kind of shop, often you'll find that they tot up the bill using a soroban. And being wooden and having this nice clickety-clack sort of feel to it, it adds a little bit of elegance to the transaction, more than you would get with an electronic calculator anyway. But primarily, it is a calculation tool. And although I've never learned to use it myself, I'm told that it's so accurate that there's less risk of making an error in a decimal point than there is with an electronic calculator. So before we get into any further detail, let's go on and see how you use one of these things in nice, easy steps. A contest is being held to determine who is the fastest person on the soroban. The contestants have to add up a series of numbers while they're being read off at great speed. The numbers run into the quadrillions, that's 16 digits, and each is read out in just four seconds. The contestants calculate the answers virtually as fast as the numbers are read off. That means every second they're manipulating beads representing four digits. Virtuosos at this level can solve multiplication and division problems involving multiple digits with remarkable speed and accuracy. At the Kitano Temmangu Shrine in Kyoto, people come to worship the god of learning, Sugawara no Michizane. Every year during the New Year holidays, a ceremonial first soroban calculation ritual takes place. Children show off their skills on these specially installed abacuses. The idea is that by demonstrating how well they've practiced, the deity of scholarship will bless them with greater intelligence and success in their education. Today, just as in centuries past, the soroban symbolizes the zest for education in Japan. Children's soroban competitions are held throughout the country. Parents say that learning the soroban helps their children hone their mathematical skills. At first, the children may need to be encouraged, but for most of them it doesn't take long before they become fascinated by the soroban. Gradually being able to make calculations that are ever more complex, that's one of the things that makes the soroban so engaging. Some parents even start their children learning the soroban while they're still in kindergarten. It takes long hours of practice to get the hang of it, as shown by the intent expressions on these children's faces. After she gets home, this girl goes over the lessons with her mother. When she's finished, her mother checks the answers with an electronic calculator. 
合ってるじゃないさっきと同じだったごめんね意地悪ある程度そろばんないんだよねもうすぐにこれを使うのはもうすぐにこれを使うのはもうすぐにこれを使うのはもうすぐにこれを使うのはもうすぐにこれを使うのはもうすぐにこれを使うのは How does a soroban work? Each vertical row of beads represents a multiple of ten. The single beads at the top stand for five units. Below the bar there are four more beads, each of which stands for one unit. With the five bead in the up position and the four lower beads at the bottom, none of the beads are touching the bar, so the value is zero. Let's start by counting up to ten. First, you select which vertical row is your single unit's column. From one to four, you raise the four beads below the bar one at a time. When you reach five, you pull down the five bead at the top, while also pulling down the lower beads. Counting from six to nine, the five bead is left in the down position, and the lower beads are again raised one at a time. To show 10, you raise the five bead again, pull down the lower beads, and push up one of the lower beads in the column to the left, which represents tens. Here's a simple abacus calculation 12 plus 22. First, we move the beads so they are in the 12 position by raising one bead in the tens column and two in the right hand single units column. Next, we have to add 22 to this. You pull up two more of the lower beads in the tens column, plus two in the single units column. Now there are a total of three beads raised in the tens column, and four beads in the single units column, which gives the answer 34. Now let's try a subtraction. 13 minus 9. First, we input the larger of the two numbers, 13. There are only three of the lower beads raised in the single units column, so that's not enough to take away 9. Instead, we pull down the raised bead in the tens column. But we've subtracted 10 when we only need to take away 9. So we have to add one bead back in the single units column. That leaves us with four beads up. So the answer is four. I was remembering just now when I was in primary school learning to do long addition and things, we used to write, have to write down all of our workings on paper. And when you could see the numbers in front of you, it really helped you to understand the calculations. I remember being very shocked when I found that my own children in school were using calculators not only in class but in tests as well, and being concerned that they were perhaps not going to understand the process. Of course, seeing the way an apicus is used, it seems to give you the advantage of both sides,、uh, which is what's kind of fascinating to me. We're going to have a look now at how fast an experienced Soroban user can make calculations. And sitting down here is Mr. Takayanagi Kazuma, who has been using a Soroban, studying it for 20 years now. And in, you know, in、um, martial arts, They have different ranks which are called dan, and they usually go up to about seventh or eighth dan. In Soroban, too, they have the same kind of ranks, and it goes up to tenth dan. Takaya Nagi san has acquired a tenth dan, so he's a, a real expert. He's going to be using his Soroban, I'm going to be using a calculator, and we can, well, I wouldn't take any bets, but we're going to see who can do it faster. And calling the numbers is going to be his father, Mr. Takaya Nagi Kazuyuki, who is a Soroban instructor. And,、um, Takayanagi-san, can you do、Hi. it? Let us do a little practice run with. You can do it a bit slower, please. Okay. So that <laughs> I can do it. number. Okay. Addition and subtraction. Okay. okay. Starting with 7,254. Subtract 2,089. Add 3,942. 9,108. Subtract 4,000. 876. That's all. How much? 13,339. That's right. 
thirteen thousand three hundred thirty-nine. Very good. <laughs> okay. All right. Now um, I'll leave it up to you. You can do it as fast as you want, okay. and as many numbers as you want, and we'll see if I can even start to keep up. Okay. Next one. Uh, ten to fourteen digit. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> ten to fourteen addition only. Starting with thirty-eight billion one hundred forty million nine hundred fifty-eight thousand four hundred two eight trillion one hundred forty-nine billion three hundred eighty-two million seventy-five thousand nine hundred sixty-three. Seventy-nine trillion eight hundred twelve million six hundred thirty-four million one hundred seven thousand eight hundred forty-six one billion nine hundred sixty-seven million eight hundred forty thousand two hundred ninety-five seven hundred fifty-six billion two hundred thirteen million seven hundred eighty-four thousand nineteen. That's all. How much did you get? Eight eight seven five eight three three eight seven six six five two five. That's right. <sighs> Just for the sake of argument, um, or rather, the very first number. I just want to see if I inputted it correctly or not. Okay. Three eight one four o nine five eight four o two. That's right. Uh, That's number. That was as far as I could get. I I just didn't. I wasn't wasn't able to input even the second number. That's amazing. Whew. Congratulations. <laughs> Well, thank you very much to both of you for coming in today. You're welcome. That was a total humiliation, of course, but nevertheless very educational. I was tempted to ask Takaya Nagisan for a rematch and take away his soroban, but that wouldn't have done any good at all because he's just as fast without it. And on our next video, you'll find out why. Here, numbers are flashing up on a screen for a brief moment. The contestants have to add them up in their heads. In mental arithmetic contests like this, usually 15 figures are displayed one after another at a rate of one a second. If you watch the hands of the children taking part, each of them seems to be working on an invisible soroban. Once you have practiced long enough on a soroban, you can actually start to visualize it in your mind. This allows you to do rapid mental arithmetic, even if you don't have a real soroban in front of you. In advanced mental arithmetic contests. Fifteen triple-digit numbers are displayed in just over two seconds. That means the contestants are adding up about seven numbers per second. Kawano Kimiko of Nippon Medical School conducted an experiment in which he scanned the brains of Soroban experts in action. The active regions of the brain are shown in red. According to most theories. Doing calculations ought to show most activity in the left side of the brain, but here, the left side of the brain remains blue. Instead, the red area of activity is centered around the right occipital lobe, which is the area of the brain devoted to image processing. This indicates that advanced soroban users actually visualize the soroban in their heads as they do their calculations. I believe that just by continuing to visualize a soroban, the activity builds up the ability to concentrate. This applies to other areas, so it's not only useful for calculations. It's also very valuable as a form of brain training. Japanese mental arithmetic experts can apparently multiply a six-digit number by a five-digit number in just three seconds. Mind you, there's only about 15 people in the whole country that can do that. But nevertheless, just for an example, I've written out a couple of random numbers: a six-digit number and a five-digit number here. So it's like、um, seven nines are sixty-three, carry six; seven eights are fifty-six, plus six is sixty-two, carry six again, etc., etc. You've got to make thirty. Separate calculations in three seconds. It doesn't make any sense at all to most people, I'm sure. Apparently, what these experts are doing is keeping an image of the beads in their mind while they're making the calculations. Some people use one of these. Apparently, Takaya Nagisan, who was with me a moment ago, doesn't need one of these. But some less experienced people will use a frame without the beads, and they just run their fingers over it. To help them make the calculations. Nevertheless, thirty calculations in three seconds sounds like genius level to me. 
The direct ancestor of the modern Japanese soroban came from China about 400 years ago. And I have an example here of the sort of thing that was being used at that time. It's a little bit fragile, but I think you'll get the gist of it. As you can see, the beads, which are much bigger, are spherical, uh, as opposed to the modern ones, which are more a sort of lozenge shape, which are easier to manipulate faster as well. And as you'll see, the number of beads is also different. There's five lower beads and two upper ones, as opposed to four and one now. So after its introduction to Japan, this was gradually refined to this, making it not only faster, but more accurate for a decimal culture. It's a very typical example of the Japanese importing something and then refining it for their own use. This ancient system for calculating numbers was introduced from China to Japan. Known as Sangi, or divining block, it was used by geomancers and fortune tellers in the Heian period a thousand years ago. In those days, mathematics was used more for divination than for solving theoretical problems. But in the 15th and 16th centuries, mathematics made great advances in Japan. When the samurai warlords conquered new territories, they had to make detailed calculations of which areas were under cultivation, so that they could impose the appropriate amount of tax. Huge engineering works were also carried out, constructing castles, towns, canals, and mines. All of these demanded complex calculations. It was during this period that the perfect instrument was introduced to Japan for making those kinds of calculations. The abacus was exactly the right tool for the times, and it was eagerly embraced in Japan. Another century was to pass before the Soroban began to be widely used, after the start of the Edo period in the early 1600s. The civil war had ended and peace prevailed. Trade flourished both by land and sea. Rice and other food products were shipped from all over Japan to the twin centers of commerce, Osaka and Edo. At the same time, a money-based economy developed. By the mid-17th century, various forms of metal coinage were introduced. The Soroban became an essential tool for merchants and money changers, who had to calculate the fluctuating exchange rates between the different currencies that were in circulation.
This triumph was cause for elation across the country. It also led to a new Soroban boom, with enthusiastic students packing into Soroban classes. As the economy recovered after the war, the Soroban became a symbol of people's aspiration to improve their living standards. By the 1970s, however, the new compact electronic calculators had taken over in the world of commerce. Although the Soroban still remains a fundamental part of children's education, today it has virtually vanished from the business world. I have a selection here of different abacuses from different time periods, different places. Let's start here. This is a replica of one that would have been used in ancient Rome. And you have metal beads which slide up and down grooves cut into a marble slab here. I'm not sure why some of the grooves are longer, some are shorter. These ones have two beads, this one has three. Your guess is as good as mine, but that's from ancient Rome, or a replica of an ancient Roman one anyway. This one here, uh, with the beads on a diagonal, is from Russia. And again, you've got four, two, four figure configuration here, and some of them just have four, four beads. This one is a Japanese uh, one. I'm not quite sure how old this is, but it's, it's a double one. So presumably if you wanted to uh, calculate accounts in and accounts out, you could do it at the same time. These two here, this bigger one and a slightly smaller version of it, both come from the Edo period. This apparently was a samurai uh, household version of uh, a soroban. And this is the, the commoner's version, which is slightly smaller. But again, both of them have five lower beads and two upper beads, which is the same as the original Chinese version came in, although you can see the shape of the beads has already changed. The soroban is, of course, a calculation tool, although it's now known that continued soroban use can lead to a sharpening of mental skills altogether. In recent days, there's growing concern about the decline in Japanese children's mathematical skills, and this has led to a reappraisal of the role of the Soroban in education. At this primary school, one of the teachers, Narahara Yaimi, is using an unusual type of abacus with 100 beads. The colourful beads add a strong visual dimension to arithmetic classes. <laughs> Ten can be made up from different combinations of numbers. One and nine, two and eight, three and seven, and so on. The ability to perform calculations depends on being able to combine and break apart these sets of numbers in an instant. In recent years, there have been growing indications of a decline in numeracy skills in Japan. In an OECD study of 15-year-olds in 57 countries, conducted in 2006, Japan ranked 10th. That was a steep decline. Just six years earlier, Japan was in top place. Even more serious is the drop in interest in learning maths. Another study of 37 countries and regions had Japan second from the bottom in the percentage of students saying that they liked arithmetic and mathematics. As a result, Japan's primary schools have begun to reconsider the way in which they teach the traditional fundamentals of reading, writing, and soroban. A new soroban program has been introduced at this primary school in Fujioka, in Gunma Prefecture, north of Tokyo. Having developed a newfound appreciation for the merits of the traditional soroban, a private instructor has been brought in. I like the click-clack sound. Using the tens column was really hard. As we saw earlier on, the three R's, the traditional reading, writing, and soroban, if you like, 
form the fundamental basis of education going all the way back to the Buddhist temple schools. Reading and writing are of course essential in any culture, but an ability to calculate has long been considered of equal importance in Japan. And of course that's one reason why the Soroban has been a tool of vital importance. It's not just its function as a calculating tool either. The fact that it uses a right brain creative approach to traditionally left brain logical problems is again an, an interesting touch. And for those of us who have to buy a new computer every couple of years because our current model has become outdated, this could be a fairly useful and very inexpensive investment to make. And if you find that your skills never really get there, you can always use it as a percussion instrument. See you next time. This Soroban competition is being called in English. In recent years, this has become a popular variation in Soroban contests. It's a challenge for the callers as well. Starting with 326,500,000,000 kilohertz. Hassan. Starting with plus three. And this is an English language Soroban class. The aim is to enable the children to learn English while honing their Soroban skills. Minus 29 plus 11 plus 43. That's all. Hi. 6,224. That's right. Starting with 293 dollars. Soroban classes are also being held for foreigners in Japan. 198 dollars. 800 dollars. There's no reason why they can't become just as good at it as Japanese Soroban users. The biggest hurdle is training their fingers to work with dexterity. Very interesting. Teaching very interestingly. It's my first time to see you, Soroban. Kiss, kiss. The Soroban appears to have a universal appeal. It's an instrument that makes mathematics fun. Even in the modern world, with computers and electronic calculators at our fingertips, the Soroban refuses to die out, because it allows us to work out the answers for ourselves, using our own brains and fingers. On the next edition of Begin Japanology, we look at the vibrant tradition and the dramatic history of Kimono Inokinawa.